Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and at the beginning of the season I started a series saying if you follow these instructions you'll hopefully finish in the top 5% globally and it's still going <laughs> and as far as I can tell you the people that have been following it are all comfortably within the top 5% and those that joined late they're shooting up the ranks so you're not going to win the whole thing following these instructions but top 5% means if you're in a mini league of 20 or fewer players you've got a very good chance of finishing either at the top or very near the top. So um, this is game week 30. We're going to look at how the scores went and then what transfers we may need to do and who the captain is, etc. Right, let's have a look at game week 29 and then game week 30. So for game week 29, I suggested you bench boosted. So with this scoring that I'm doing now, I'm assuming you all had 15 players playing. So the goalkeepers, there was a choice of six. You'd have had two of these. De Gea, Rea, Ramsdale, Pope, Kepper, Meslier, and they scored 8 8 3 8 8 2. So that was an average of 12.3 for your two keepers. You'd have had two or three of these defenders, so I'm scoring this as if you had two and a half of these. You'd have had Trent, Van Dyke, Trippier, Chilwell, James, Shaw, Gabriel, or Zinchenko. Now these expensive defenders didn't do particularly well this week, as you can see. So they got an average of 14 points for these two and a half. The minimum was half a point. So that would have been Trent, Van Dyke, and half of Shaw. So I'm taking the worst two and a half. And the best was 26 and a half, which would have been Trippier and Chilwell for 23, and then half of James, which is 26 and a half. So that's how the scoring's working on this. The second set of defenders, you'd have had two or three of these, which was me, Estupian, Eguard, Botman, Pinnock, Castagna, Fafana, Worrell. But then before game week 29 started, we took Worrell out because he was going to be injured and you were going to bench boost. And I suggested you replaced him with either Estupian or Eguard, otherwise somebody else on this page. And so they scored 3, 7, 15, 9, 9, 6 and 7. So these got a much better score than the previous defenders. They averaged 20. For the midfield, you'd have had two or three of these which was 7, 4, 1, 4, 3, 12, 6, so an average of 13.2. And you'd have had two and a half of these, I'm saying. Martinelli, Gibbs, White, McAllister, Matoma, March, Jensen, Somerville. Got 5, 4, 9, 14, 8, 7, 2. That was an average of 17 and a half. You'd have had one or two of these, so I'm counting one and a half. Harland, Kane, Darwin, Tony, Felix. These called didn't play. 7, 3, 11, 2. So I'm counting Harland as one of your players you may have had because if you bench boosted, he counted even though he didn't get you anything at all. So they only got an average of 6.9 for these strikers. Then the second set of strikers, you'd have had one and a half of Watkins, Isaac, Ings, and Buemo and Johnson, who scored 17, 8, 3, 11, 8. So that was an average of 14.1. So the theme this week for defenders, midfielders and strikers is the cheaper lot did better than the more expensive lot. And that just happens some weeks. And for the captains of game week 29, your choice was between Rashford, Fernandez, the Brighton boys, Madison, otherwise others. So I'm just going to score for the six that are on the page. They scored 12, 4, 14, 8, 9, 4. So your captain would have got an average of eight and a half. So the global average for the whole game was 80 points last week. Of course, because many managers bench boosted and there were many players playing twice. The minimum you'd have got if you were following these instructions by my reckoning was 45 and a half points. I don't know if that was a legal team, but if it was, it's 45 and a half. The average was 106.5. The maximum was 176. And I checked the six or seven people that I believe are following this system and they all got around the 100 mark or a fair bit higher. I think one got a red arrow, but still a good score and all the rest got comfortable green arrows. So it's going all right. Thank you to everyone who has subscribed to this. Likes are good as our comments all helps. The thing I think helps the most is watching it all the way through or at least letting it run in the background if you want to do something else. Okay, transfer talk. Something we need to be mindful of is game week 32. There are four teams blanking. Game week 34, there are some doubles, and there'll be some more doubles after that. So 
Any transfers you want to make within the system, that's fine. You can just swap players about if you particularly want one and you haven't got them. But just be mindful of who is and isn't playing. So I'll go over that just now. So there are four teams blanking in game week 32. Brighton, Chelsea, Man City and Man United. And we're about to start game week 30. So I'm suggesting you, as of game week 30, you try to have no more than five players from these teams. I've put an asterisk there. Because if you have a goalkeeper from one of these teams, that's fine. But if you have a goalkeeper from two of these teams, then you're going to be a keeper short. So then that's kind of another play you haven't got. Now, if you're going to game week 32 without being able to field a full 11, that's OK. It's not necessarily worth taking a hit to make your team worse just for that one week so you get the extra player. But you may want to shuffle your team around. So I'm just saying, if you're making transfers, just be mindful of what's coming and if you've got six players from these teams, I think it's probably worth doing a transfer. So we'll look at which players I think are worth transferring out of these. So Brighton's next two fixtures are away to Spurs, away to Chelsea, and then they're not playing. Chelsea are away to Wolves, home to Brighton, not playing. Man City, away to Southampton, home to Leicester, not playing. Man United home to Everton, then away to Forest and not playing. The order they've appeared is probably from the weakest to the strongest anyway. So if money wasn't an issue, because you didn't have money tied up in these players, then I'd look to be offloading the Brighton players first, if you needed to, then Chelsea, then Man City, then Man United, until by game week 32, you hopefully have 11. But like I said, it's not worth breaking your team to get 11 players out. This is assuming you don't have your free hit, of course. The slight thing that's Changes a little bit is Chelsea now have Frank Lampard in charge at the end of the season and I would expect there to be a bounce for Chelsea as in going up the way. So Chilwell and James are in this system. They might start playing better. I know Joao Felix is in this system. It may well be that he starts doing really well now. Fafana's in this system. So um, it would be interesting to see what <laughs> happened with all this. That said, if it wasn't for Frank going there, then Joao Felix would be an easy striker to move on if you had him in your team but because Frank's there it may get a bit nice in the next few weeks so of the goalkeepers things you want to keep in mind is De Gea and Kepa both blank in game week 32 so if you have both of those you probably want to replace one by the time you get to game week 32 something to keep in mind is Pope has got a double game week coming up it's not been announced yet People online are thinking probably game week 36 or 37. So it is in the future, but he would have an extra game if you had to replace one of those players. He might be the one to do it with. Of your defenders, the more expensive players, Chilwell blanks in 32, James blanks in 32, Shaw blanks in 32. And at time of recording, Shaw's got a hamstring injury and we don't know how long he's going to be out for. So Shaw may be quite an easy one to move on if he's going to be out for several weeks. But it may be by the time you set your team, we don't have that information yet. And then Trent doubles in game week 34. Van Dijk doubles in game week 34. And then Trippier has a future double game week at some point. So if you're moving any of those three players on that are blanking in 32, one of those first three would be a good one to get. And if you've not got Trippier, I'd suggest you get Trippier. But it's up to you. Do what you like. Get Zinchenko if you like. Uh, and then for the other defenders, the cheaper defenders, Estupian's blanking in 32 and Fofana's blanking in 32. Aguard's got a double game week in 34, but it's against tough opposition. Botman's got a future double game week. For the midfielders, Fernandez blanks in 32, Rashford blanks in 32, Seller doubles in 34, Gakpo doubles in 34. For the cheaper midfielders, we have the three Brighton boys all blank in 32. For the forwards, Haaland blanks in 32 and Jao Felix blanks in 32. And if Felix isn't doing anything by the time we get to 32, if 30 and 31, he's still done nothing. If you've got him, I think he's a very easy sell at that point. And then Darwin's got a double game week in game week 34. Darwin's a strange character because he's very close to getting very, very good scores most weeks and yet he keeps getting ones and twos. 
Darwin's in my squad. I like him and I'm intending to hold him for now. But don't let that influence you. If you're following the system, you're all beating me. Because I'm not following the system because I'm an idiot. Right, of the other forwards, the cheaper forwards, Isaac's got a future double game week. So if you were looking to shuffle some of these around, then it might be you want to get him in. Now, although I've laid these out as two sets of defenders, midfielders and strikers, of course you can go between them. So if you wanted to have three strikers from this page, you could do that. It's just when I come to the scoring, I work on these pages separately. But you can just mix up anyone you want in this squad. As long as it's the legal squad, that's okay. And then Ings has a double game week in game week 34. But again, against maybe difficult opposition. So for benching, I'm now going to show you the six keepers in order. The first keeper you see that you have, I'm suggesting you put on your bench. It's very close this week. All of these keepers could easily get between three and seven points. So if any of these get a clean sheet, it wouldn't be a surprise. However, given who the opposition are, this is the order I would suggest. So the first keeper you see that you have, they go on your bench. So if you've got Ramsdale, I suggest you bench him. If you don't have him, but you have Raya, Raya's on your bench. If you have neither of those two, but Pope, Pope's on your bench. If you have none of those, then Mesley is on your bench for Leeds. Now I know it might seem a bit dodgy, playing your Leeds keeper over Ramsdale or Pope, but given the fixtures, that's what I would be doing. I think that's an okay move. And then it would be Kepa, and then it would be De Gea. But these are the six, so if you have De Gea, it will be him you're playing. If you have Kepa but not De Gea, it will be him you're playing. So hopefully that makes sense. The first what keeper that you saw that appeared, that's the one you want to bench. I'm now going to suggest, I think there's nine players here. The first one you see that you have goes into bench slot number three, the second one bench slot number two, and the last one bench slot number one. And I'd expect most of you are going to have two or three of these players. So if you've got Aguard, he's on your bench. Somerville, bench. Jensen, he's next on your bench. Me, Pinnock, Estupilen, Gabriel, Zinchenko, Gibbs White. Now I know this means you're playing you've got more chance of playing Gibbs White than Zinchenko and Gabriel, but again, given the fixtures, I think Gibbs White's probably got a bit more chance of getting better points. Also, if you're trying to get rid of players for your game week 32 because you won't have enough players, because we're going to be benching a stupid and chances are he's going to be benched, this would be a good week to be moving him on. If after seeing this page you still don't have three players on your bench, then put your cheapest defender that you still have on your bench. And if you still don't have enough, or you can't because you've already got two defenders on there, put your cheapest outfield players on the bench. But that was my suggested bench order. That's how I'll be scoring it next week. And I think you should do all right if you follow these instructions. Regarding the captain, I'm going to show you six players, a group of three, which are my preferred captains and vice captains. And then if you can't do those, I'm going to show you another three. And I'm going to be showing these in alphabetical order. So I'm not necessarily showing you each set of three in the best order. So Harland, Rashford, Watkins, if you have any of those, then I suggest you make them your captain and they get to wear the old mule hat. They all seem to wear it better than I do. So these are alphabetical. So not necessarily this order. If Harlan's not confirmed fit, i.e. still got the little yellow triangle by him, I'd be a bit reserved about playing him, in which case I'd probably go for Rashford or Watkins. However, Harlan could come off the bench and in the last 10-15 minutes get a goal or two. Or he could start, go off at 60 minutes, by which point he's got a hat-trick. So if you don't captain Harlan, and a lot of other people do, you're gambling, they're going to get a better score than you by a long way. But equally, you may captain on him and he only plays for a short while and Rashford or Watkins smash it. So any of these three should be fine to captain. If you've got two of these players, I suggest you choose one as captain and one as vice captain. Now, all the teams I looked at that I know are following this, you've all got at least one of these apart from one team. So I'm going to show you another three, which are perfectly good captains, but I'd do these as the second choice captains, really which are Kane, Madison and Salah. And again, these are just alphabetical. So any order you want. So hopefully you've all got at least two of these players that are on the screen now. So one's your captain, one's your vice captain. If you don't have at least two of these on the screen, then just do your order as 
your most expensive outfield player, which would be uh, midfielders and forwards. Just choose that as your captain or your vice captain. But this would be my suggested order for this week. This week, it looks like it's the outfield players, the midfielders and the forwards that are going to be getting the more points and the defenders might be a bit more difficult for them to be getting points. Now, I'm sorry, I'm sorry that was a bit long. I thought I'd be able to start doing shorter videos again now, but because of the double game week's coming up and the blank and having to move players about, it's still a little bit complex. I'm sorry about that, but hopefully you're enjoying it all right. Hopefully you're doing all right in your leagues following this system, and I'll hopefully see you next week. Thanks for watching. Bye.